The day started off like any other, nothing out of the ordinary. But when a little girl asks her mother for a simple thing, a bowl of cereal for breakfast, things would suddenly take an awful and unexpected turn. A turn that there was no going back from. Welcome, or welcome back. I'm Cassie, and this is A Wicked World. The case I'll be talking about today is one that's almost too unbelievable to be true. And it's so horrendous that it's something you wouldn't even think a complete stranger would be capable of doing. Never mind a mother. This is the story of Giovanna Hernandez. Giovanna Laria Hernandez, lovingly called Gio, was born on August 30th, 2011 in Austin, Texas. Her parents' names were Refugio, Junior for short, Hernandez, and Crystal Villanueva. Gio loved to sing, dance, watch funny YouTube videos, and she also loved playing with Shopkins and spending time with her adoring grandparents, who she would often host tea parties for. Gio also loved playing with her cousins. She was said to be a very kind and compassionate little girl. Crystal Villanueva and Junior Hernandez met when they were just teens. In 2011, Crystal, who was 19 at the time, became pregnant and soon gave birth to the couple's beautiful daughter, Gio. So sometimes the couple would live together with Gio, but there was other times where they would live apart. Junior would live with his mother, Nancy, and his stepfather, Eustorgio, in Kyle, Texas. And during those times, Crystal and Gio would stay with Crystal's family in Austin, Texas. Now, Gio's mother, Crystal, had a history of mental illness as well as drug abuse. So at the end of 2016, when Crystal was 24 and Gio was five, Crystal and Junior discussed Crystal and Gio moving back in with him and his mother and stepfather. So then on January 3rd, 2017, Crystal and Gio did move back in with them to their home in Kyle. That night, Junior ended up having to take Crystal to the hospital because she had been repeatedly vomiting. Crystal would later say that she had a delusional break from reality had shaved off some body hair and drank bleach to rid herself of a witch. She also said that Nancy and Eustorgio, Junior's parents, were trying to poison her. She, however, never said any of this at the time that she was at the hospital, and she never told anybody else this. This was only later that she said that. So it's unsure if that's actually true or not. Then two days later, on January 5th, Junior and his mother had both left for work early that morning. Eustorgio spent the morning in his bedroom watching TV, while Crystal had done some laundry, bathed Gio, and then sat outside on her computer. Around lunchtime, Eustorgio was sitting at the kitchen table eating when Crystal walked in. Without a single word, she retrieved a large kitchen knife, then turned and returned to her room without a single word. Now, Eustorgio figured this was just normal behavior for Crystal. She often did this because she would cut up fruit and eat it while she was in her room. But after that, Eustorgio heard Gio saying, no mommy, no mommy. But he said that it just sounded like her normal protests when Crystal was trying to take electronics away from her. Then Crystal came back out to the kitchen and went to pass Eustorgio. As she did, she turned and stabbed him in the back four times. After that, he was able to turn around and face her. She then stabbed him twice more before he was able to bite her hand and Crystal dropped the knife. At which point, Eustorgio grabbed the knife and ran out of the house to the neighbor's house to call 911. While Eustorgio and the neighbor were on the 911 call, Crystal suddenly came out of the house holding a BB gun. She pointed the gun at Eustorgio and the neighbor, but luckily for them, it was broken. It didn't fire. Crystal then dropped the gun and turned around and went back inside. When she went back into the house, she also called 911. She told the operator, these effing people are trying to kill me. And then she gave them her address. A couple minutes passed, and as the 911 operator was trying to ask Crystal more questions, she didn't answer any of them. When she finally did speak, she said that her dad was trying to kill her. When the operator asked her for her name, she at first said Crystal, but then said Nathaniel Walker. 
the operator asked if he had a weapon, and Crystal said, no, 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 he was just watching TV. My daughter wanted some cereal, and I killed her. The operator, surprised, asked her if that was indeed what she said, to which Crystal responded, yeah, I killed her because she wanted some cereal, and then I stabbed my father-in-law. Minutes passed, and Crystal wasn't talking anymore, but the 911 operator could hear a loud banging noise. The operator asked her what she was banging on. She said, nothing. I'm just trying to cut my daughter's head off. The operator asked her why, and she said, because she wanted cereal. About 10 to 15 minutes after the initial 911 call placed by Eustorgio, police officers started arriving to the scene. Once there, they took the knife from Eustorgio and immediately sent him in an ambulance to the hospital, as he was bleeding quite a bit. Crystal's mother was also called, and she immediately drove from Austin to Kyle. Then the SWAT team arrived. Over the next hour, the SWAT officers called for Crystal to come outside. Crystal's mother spoke to the officers and offered to go inside, but they wouldn't allow it, for obvious reasons. She's gonna get her head cut off too. Eventually, the officers were able to get into the house, and Crystal came walking out of the bathroom wearing a towel. She had just taken a shower. She was placed under arrest immediately. She was flailing, kicking, and spitting at everybody as she was arrested. She was also smiling and laughing as she thought it was funny that she was giving them such a hard time. Hopefully that's what it was and it wasn't for any other reason that she was laughing. They had to put a spit sock, padded helmet, and body restraint on her. The officers brought Crystal to the hospital where she kept screaming and screaming. When the nurse asked her what her name was, she told her she didn't have a name. She was also trying to break free from her restraints. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, calm down and asked the nurse for drugs. After she was brought to the hospital, Crystal was then brought to jail. On her way there, Crystal was in the back of the cop car crying and saying, my baby, I didn't know it was her. Just kill me. I didn't know. I swear. I thought it was a doll. I thought it was an effing clone. I'm so sorry, baby. I swear to God. When the police interviewed Crystal, it was very bizarre. The officer read Crystal her Miranda rights and asked her if she understood. She said, I'm trying to focus. There's so many voices in my head. The officer told her, just listen for my voice. Only listen to that voice. She told him that nothing else mattered because she had killed her daughter and she also had not slept in days. The officer ended up having to read her her Miranda warnings five times before she would sign them. And when she finally did sign, she signed it no name. She later said that she thought the paper with the written Miranda warnings on it was a contract that they were trying to get her to sign to go work on the streets. Right. Crystal kept asking for Geo and pacing the room. Soon, she bent over and pulled down her pants and defecated in her hands. The officers had to come in and bring her to the ground to restrain her. So five days after being booked in jail, Crystal was diagnosed with psychosis and prescribed medication. However, medical records show that she never ended up taking the prescribed medication. Gio had been stabbed and then severely mutilated. Most of her injuries were post-mortem. Various appendages had been cut off. Her skin was sliced from the top of her back down the entire length of her back. Her head was removed, as well as organs that had been piled on top of her body. Both Junior and Eustorgio testified at the trial that Crystal seemed completely normal that morning. Crystal's mother and sister testified at her trial. Shortly before Crystal and Gio had moved in with Junior, they had been living with her mother and sister. Crystal's sister, Samantha, said that she had been spending a lot of time alone in her room, just staring at the ceiling and laughing to herself. She also said at one point she was sitting on her bed, taking apart her cell phone, when Samantha asked her what she was doing, she said, you can't hear that noise. Samantha said no, as her cell phone was in two different pieces, battery cell phone. 
Apparently that didn't matter though, because at that point, Crystal just got some tweezers and started further picking apart the cell phone. Samantha said that she wasn't worried by this because this was normal behavior for Crystal. Crystal's mother would say that when she was just nine years old, that's when the first signs of her mental illness started showing. Crystal's mother said that a cousin of Crystal's had inappropriately touched her when she was younger, and that had led to the family being driven apart. She said after that, Crystal began seeing a shadow boy or a shadow ghost around the house. But then when the family moved to a new house, she said that she saw this shadow boy in the new house as well. It was said that during her teen and adult years, Crystal would sometimes hide in closets from invisible assailants. Sometimes she would just completely disappear for days. Once she was gone for three days and then when she came home, she ran into the house and said that God had touched her and shown her everything. But now the devil was after her. Crystal also believed that people were watching her through the air vents. She would tell her family that the devil was searching for her. Once, Crystal screamed at family members to get down and claimed to have seen a red dot on one person's head from a sniper gun. She said that these snipers were inside of trees outside of their home. Crystal's sister said that another time while her, Crystal, and their children were shopping, Crystal disappeared. She later found her in the public restroom saying that she was hiding from the CIA. She was scared to come out and would not come out until Samantha had reassured her that she had called off the CIA for her and they were no longer coming. Her mother and sister tried to attribute all this odd behavior to her mental illness, but she wasn't diagnosed with anything when she was younger. She wasn't actually diagnosed until she went to a drug rehab in 2015 for her substance abuse of crack and meth. There, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and ADHD. So Crystal's family was testifying that she had had these delusions for years. However, when they spoke to police after Gio's death, they told police that they believed all this behavior had been from drug use throughout the years. It wasn't until the case went to court that they all of a sudden started with the crazy defense for her. Her mother would say that she thought Crystal's odd behavior for years was because she smoked weed. Forget those other drugs there. Those are nothing. It's weed that you gotta worry about. Crystal said that 12 hours before Gio died, she had found herself standing over Junior with a knife ready to stab him. But then all of a sudden Gio stirred in her bed and Crystal had snapped out of it. Many times Crystal would say that she thought the devil was coming for Gio and Junior. She had also at one time told Gio that she was not her daughter, which made poor little Gio cry. One time in June of 2015, the police had encountered Crystal walking alongside a highway, supposedly fleeing from a man named Santana. The man she said was capable of turning into a bird and hunting down her, Junior, and Gio. From there, that's when she had gone to drug rehab, where she had been diagnosed with her different mental illnesses. She said that the reason why she had never told anybody about these delusions before is because she was afraid to be committed to a mental hospital, which would have been better than what happened to poor Gio. The doctor that had seen and treated Crystal testified that she was suffering from psychosis which he said made her meet the requirements for an insanity defense, if the jury would buy that. There had been multiple times that Crystal appeared to have known exactly what she had done to Gio, like when she was on the 911 call and she told the operator that she was cutting off her head. So the doctor that testified for Crystal believed that she had Capgras syndrome, which is the delusional belief that loved ones have been replaced with imposters. Crystal had believed that Gio had been replaced by a clone or imposter and that she needed to kill this imposter in order to get her real daughter back. Crystal also believed that there was a key inside this imposter Gio that she needed to find in order to send this imposter back and get her daughter again. Her doctor said that Crystal did not understand 
that she was stabbing and cutting into a real person. The thing is, Crystal had never spoken of clones or dolls at any time during the 911 call or at the hospital after. It was only after her blood was drawn and she was tested for alcohol and marijuana that she started to talk about the clones and dolls. The jury ended up rejecting Crystal's insanity defense and found her guilty on both charges. She was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for a capital murder and another 20 years for the aggravated assault of Eustorgio. Her two sentences were ordered to run concurrently. Giovanna Hernandez's funeral was held at the Harrell Funeral Home in Kyle, Texas, and she was later buried on January 10th, 2017 at the San Juan Cemetery in Reedville, Texas. She is greatly missed by so many of her family members, especially her father, Junior. Well, thank you for listening to all of Giovanni's story today. I know this was a tough one to listen to as it was pretty brutal. So thanks for sticking in there. I really do appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me for the channel. Thank you for watching A Wicked World. Until next time, take care. Bye.